Silent Hill 4 is a pretty wacky game with a lot of wacky ideas. Whenever you write a horror story, you're at risk of the story being either too tame or too weird. You want it to fall somewhere in between because if it's too tame, then people aren't going to be scared by it. They're not scared by what's familiar to them. But if it's too weird, they're just going to laugh at it. They're going to think it's, you know, crazy and it doesn't make sense. So you want to hit somewhere in between where you show them stuff that is weird enough to be scary to them, but also still familiar enough to where they comprehend, oh yeah, there's danger. There are plenty of things that I think are just obviously too tame. Zombies, no one's scared of zombies, no one gives a crap about zombies. But then on the too weird side of things, I like Junji Ito a lot. Some of his manga's not scary, it's just kind of weird. For instance, there's that manga he did where there's this guy and he has like really bad pus or acne. The character, he like squeezes it onto people. That's not scary, that's just gross. So it's with this in mind that I want to take a look at Silent Hill 4. Silent Hill 4, by my deep mathematical calculations, should be too weird. On paper, it shouldn't work at all, but it does. Basically, Silent Hill 4 is about this guy named Henry. He's trapped in his apartment. His door is covered in locks. His windows won't open. If he bangs on the walls, his neighbors won't hear him. He's completely trapped. One day though, a giant hole opens up and he just crawls through it and then he goes on a uh, magical Chronicles of Narnia adventure to like weird and wondrous places. Unfortunately, these weird and wondrous places are just nightmare worlds. So he goes to building world, apartment world, hospital world, water prison world. He goes to New York subway world. They didn't even have to add in crazy enemies or anything to it. It's just, that's what New York's like. As you're going through the uh, various worlds as Henry, you slowly start to piece things together and you start to figure out, hmm, why is Henry locked in his apartment? You know, why can't he open the doors? Why is there this big tunnel that takes me to magical places? Uh, and why isn't it taking me to a freaking uh, cheesecake factory? Like, it can take me to the hospital, but it can't take me to Walmart. Like, I'm out of toilet paper. So anyways, this hole is just taking me to all these crappy places. And I'm locked in my apartment and I'm out of food and I feel really bad. So you may be wondering, what is the cause of Henry being locked in his apartment? The cause of Henry being locked in his apartment is a uh, ghost serial killer who is committing a series of ritual murders to complete a holy ritual so that way he may be reunited with his mother. But his mother is the apartment building that Henry lives in. Yeah, this is one of those things where it's something that's so crazy that I just have to take a minute and think about it. <laughs> One thing that confuses me about the killer is that he is doing a ritual murder. He is trying to kill 21 people and that will grant him the right, the ability to be with his mother the room. Wouldn't it just be easier to rent the freaking room? If you want the room, just, you know, pony up the 1500 bucks a month or whatever. It's in a bad part of town, you might be able to talk him down. I don't know. But, like, it seems like it would be way easier to just do that than to go and actually, like, kill people. I was talking about the idea of being too weird earlier. This should be too weird. This should break the game. The fact that the main villain is like this. But I don't think it does. And the reason why this crazy villain doesn't break the game is because he's treated with 100% sincerity. The game isn't talking about how stupid his desire is to be with his mom, or you know how it doesn't even make sense. All the characters in the game, except the fact that the serial killer wants to be reunited with his mommy room. Silent Hill isn't above poking fun at itself. The three games before this one all had like crazy alternate endings. They all had like UFO endings where it was revealed, oh yeah, the, the horror, it was, it was aliens. And then Silent Hill 2, did the uh, infamous dog ending where it's revealed that a Shiba controlled all of Silent Hill. So Silent Hill's not scared to have a little bit of fun, but they don't do that in this one. If the game tried to poke fun at itself like the previous games, it wouldn't work because it's too ripe for humor. It's too easy to make fun of it and too easy to be dismissive of it because of that. So for that reason, the game is able to stick together by not showing itself as vulnerable. Every horror story treads the line between being too tame and then being too weird. And the goal is to be just in the middle, right? The thing though is that that line between being too tame and being too weird is gonna be different for everyone. So I wanna play this scene for you and see how you react to it. There are a lot of strange things in this world. The umbilical cord I keep in a box in my room. Lately it started to smell terrible. Huh? Umbilical cord? Oh. Well, I forget I said anything. But still. Those noises. Some people may find that scene extremely creepy. Uh, I didn't. I just, I laughed out loud. I found it very funny. So I want to play another scene for you that will either um, creep you out or you might find it boring or, or you might laugh. I don't know who you are. 
Yeah, yes. <laughs> For context, there's nothing like that in the rest of the game. There's never another point at which a black bust of someone comes down from the ceiling and just starts talking to other people without moving its lips. I appreciated it, but I don't know, if, if someone laughed, it's like, yeah, okay, I see it. One thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that the game lets you spy on your next door neighbor. Um, it's pretty weird. There's literally a hole in your wall and then you just peek through and then you can see you're doing different things. It looks something like this. Um, it just completely changes up the vibe. You know when you start asking yourself, it's like, huh, who's really the bad guy? The serial killer who's ghost killing people? Or me? I watched my neighbor shave her leg or something. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of weird and uncomfortable. Which is good, because that's what the game is about. Is it's about being weird and uncomfortable and uh, not fitting in and just wanting to see your mommy again and um, killing people and it's just, you know, relatable stuff. So, like I said, the game takes itself 100% seriously, which is good. It shouldn't do anything else but that. But there are points when it just, it's stupid. There's no way around it. There's a weapon in the game called the Pickaxe of Despair. I don't know about you, but I've never seen a pickaxe before and thought, hmm, despair. The very idea of a pickaxe of despair in any setting I don't think would work for me. And it definitely doesn't work in a, you know, scary Japanese horror game. It has a power charge up move and it does this. Yeah, yeah that that's not, that's stupid. <laughs> so a lot of the game works because it's weird and you don't quite understand what's happening. And also you're constantly being shown just like stuff where it's like, oh, that's that's kind of weird. That's like a body hanging from something and I don't know what it's doing. It's, it's it, ah. I think one place where this game makes a mistake is that it makes you too familiar with some of the enemies. Throughout this game, you're constantly being like hounded on by ghosts. You know, the serial killer, as I've mentioned, is a ghost, but also you fight the victims that he's killed so the serial killer killed them and then they come and chase you and then you like beat them with a pipe or something so one problem i think with the ghosts is that they're not scary because you know how to fight them so for instance in the game you have a few different ways of like taking them on you have these medallions that you wear around your neck that protect you from ghost harm you get these holy candles that also they banish ghosts because sometimes ghosts come into your apartment and you just get rid of them you get a silver bullet i thought that was a werewolf thing but no apparently i and everyone else in the world was wrong Silver bullets hurt ghosts. And then last of all, uh, there's the Sword of Obedience. It's not quite as dumb as Pickaxe of Despair, but it's, it's, it's Sword of Obedience is like, it's kind of dumb. If you beat the crap out of a ghost with a pipe, then they get hurt and then they fall onto the ground. And at that point you go and you stick a Sword of Obedience in them and then they can't get up. If you give someone a crap ton of ways to fight something, they're not gonna be scared of it. They're just gonna be, you know, cycling through their head. They're gonna be going, hmm, what should I bring with me? Should I bring this gun? Should I bring the silver bullet? Should I bring the sword of obedience? They're not gonna be scared. If anyone's curious, I, I do have my notes here. By my notes, I mean a review that I printed off uh, from the interwebs. The next video I do is actually gonna be me reading off a bunch of reviews for bed sheets from Amazon. So get hyped for that. Yeah, I need to talk about the water prison world. Water prison world is an orphanage uh, run by the cult that the serial killer was raised up in. Basically what it is, is it's a giant tower that has three levels. Each level is shaped like a donut. You know, it's like, it's a big circle thing and it's stacked on top of each other. So you have the three levels like this and like a donut, there's a hole in the middle. And in that hole, there are a bunch of surveillance rooms that let the orphanage operators spy on all the kids uh, and see what they're up to. Cause there's a bunch of peepholes and you get to spy on the kids. You get to see what they're up to. They're locked in their rooms. They don't have anything to do, but you get to spy on them. That's pretty cool, right? Don't you want this job as this orphanage card? Yeah, I bet you do. Pays 8.50 an hour. You gonna spy on some kids? But anyways, each level of the tower, it rotates, which is important. One day, 
in the orphanage. The locks broke on all the doors. What that means is that uh, the kids just die. You could spend, you know, a hundred bucks on a locksmith or whatever and get all the kids out and not let them die. But um, no, we're just, we're gonna let the kids die apparently. That's what the people who run the orphanage decided to do. It's not, it's not in my hands. I can't do anything about it. But fortunately for them, each level has several holes in the room, meaning that you can rotate the tower and twist it. And in doing so, you can basically kick the dead kid bodies down through the holes and then you can you know have it go from the third floor to the second to the first down to the basement where the body will then be taken and then made into tomorrow's lunch yeah yeah, yeah it's not i didn't come up with it it's very gross but it gets worse there are several holes in each floor and um they don't line up perfectly basically what that means is that you have to line up three holes perfectly you know hole here hole here hole here you have to line them up perfectly so that way the dead body goes right through into each one and down into the basement because if you don't if you you know misalign the floors and you want the dead kid on the third floor to go into the second floor hole but you have it misaligned then the dead kid on the third floor will go into the uh, alive kid on the second floor and then that kid you know will be locked in his room with a dead body and it won't be fun for anyone in order to know which holes you need to line up it's very simple you just look out through the people and you see which bed is covered in blood and then you align the beds covered in blood and you do this and i'm not making this up this is nonsense i could not take this seriously because it's so over the top and it is so just meant to like gross you out and like weird you out and disgust you and creep you out and this was when my suspension of disbelief just completely broke like whenever i read all this like i bust out laughing um not because of kid murders but just because it's so crazy and weird and just it's it's dumb like that's all there is to it Whenever I read the game files, I didn't go, oh, this is the kind of world that Silent Hill takes place in. I just went, some writer just went and they were like, what's the grossest thing I can come up with? <laughs> yeah, let's make the bodies go through the tunnels. This is an instance where the game is too weird for me, but it's not even too weird. It's just like too over the top and too extreme, I guess. So I've talked about how you want things to be weird, but not so weird that people laugh at them. But there's a point at which you can pass through that. You can have something weird and then you can have something so weird it's laughable. And then you can pass through that and have it loop back around to where it's so weird that it's scary again. One instance of this in the game is the final boss room. The final boss of this game is none other than the mom wanter. <laughs> Anyways, you fight him in a room where there's a giant gyrating moving spike ball thing in a giant pool of blood and i just want to say that the giant spike ball in the blood is one of the most absurd things i've ever seen and i love it i think it's so cool it's a freaking heavy metal album cover you know like i don't think there's any deeper symbolism or anything i think it's just cool during the fight there's a platform that leads directly into the spinning spike ball your next door neighbor eileen who is wounded and possessed is walking down that path so basically there's a time limit. You have to kill Walter before Eileen makes it to the spike ball or else she dies. And when she dies, she makes this sound. Which is one of the single most horrifying sounds I've ever heard before. If you set this as my alarm tone, I would wake up every single morning having crapped my pants. This room, I just want to say, um, it's completely absurd. I would laugh at it if I didn't think it was cool, honestly. But again, it's another instance of the game working only because the game forces itself to work. You know, because it goes, we're doing this crazy thing, you don't laugh at us. <laughs> I love the spike ball. I think it's it's nonsense, but I love it so much. If I could have a spike ball room in a house, I would buy that house instantly. Some people have that uh, dodo bird that like, you know, bobs up and down. If I could buy like a mini rotating spike ball for my desk, I would, I would buy that crap in an instant. I don't care if I would have to take out a mortgage or something. Like, I, I just want it. I just want my own little spike ball thing. I would call it spiky. I don't know, just imagine like a like a little mini spike ball spin in blood. You could like pet it, but you would like poke your finger and then you'd bleed into it and then that would go into the pool. And so it would, you know, be a pool of your own blood. So I wanted to talk about this game just because it's, it, it's a weird game. It's a cool game. I like it a lot. At this point, it's kind of been forgotten just because you can't buy it anywhere really, except for GOG on PC. It hasn't been remastered ever for like other consoles past the PS2 and the original Xbox it came out on. It experiments a bit and not all of the experiments work out, like not at all. Still, I think there's enough good in there that's like worth a play if you're interested. There were Silent Hill games that came out after this, but for a lot of people, this is kind of where the series died just because it was the last Japanese made one and all the others are by Western developers and none of them are as interesting as this one. So this is a game that I think is much deeper and much more interesting than people give it credit for. I think that you could probably do a hundred hours worth of commentary on this and like, you know, still have stuff to talk about. This video isn't a complete 
you know, analysis or critique or anything like that. Um, this is just me talking about some stuff I found interesting. It's like really late, it's like 2.30 in the morning, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Uh, adios. There's one part in the game where a guy asks you for chocolate milk, and so you go back home and you get one out of your fridge, and then you go and give it to him, and then he drinks it, and he does this. Oh man, that was awesome! And then, five seconds later, he dies, and he becomes a ghost who's on fire. And so I think that the game is sending a message about chocolate milk.